This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right-hand side to learn more. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 78 back again. Rob's here. Here's hey, Rob. Rob. Uh, the show where we talk and banter and talk tech. Yes? Sometimes. I was trying to remember what our thing was. Uh, I'm Sorg, uh, as usual, here at the helm here at Mayhem Studios. Uh, with me uh, again, back again, Rob De La Creta. How you doing? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the undercarriage of your vehicle? <laughs> Before you answer that. Let me ask you a question. Do you have eight dollars in spare change? <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> hey, hey, back from lovely Florida. <laughs> Florida sucks. Did you know that? <laughs> I, yes, I did know that, and I'm glad like, that you found internet this week. It's awful. I ha- I had the view of SeaWorld from my hotel room. It is nothing but like blacktop and grass. Oh, yeah. jeez, <laughs> terrible. And uh, not out of town is Chachi. No, I'm on the couch. He's on the couch. I was on my phone. He's on the couch with the... Uh, I put it away, though. Two hey. He's sitting on his phone, but he has the couch in his hand. Yes. It's true. I'm holding the couch. You're holding, <laughs> holding it down. This holding is me down. holding the couch. Exactly. Uh, and with us, uh, back again, I return. It's a girl, guys. Settle down. Cynthia Klosky, how you doing? <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. A, nice to see you. A big president of BigBigDesign.com. El Presidente. El Presidente of El uh, uh, Biga. I think Biga, it should be, is it, what's the is female of El Presidente? Yeah, Certainly I was just El thinking Presidente that after I saw it. Le Presidente? La Presidenta. La, La Presidenta. <laughs> La Presidenta. I, I'm mixing it up with French, I apologize. Um, apparently you forgot to change the show title. I forgot to change show title. So there's people in the Justin TV chat room that are a little bit confused. What, what did I say? It's, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show 296 oh, no, they, they, in the chat room. They obviously need to refresh because I completely <laughs> changed that. Did you? I, I asked the internet. It is, in fact, La Presidenta. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you, internet. There you go. Did you use Google Plus or Google Translate? Not Plus. I used Answers.com. Nice. I don't know, but this this wipe is already annoying me. And, <laughs> and I'm the one doing it. Stop touching I'm it. A, I, I, I <laughs> don't forget, button. Mike. It's, it's great. Don't forget. Always front to back, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, anyway, so the, the, Cindy, the reason we had you on. Dirty. <laughs> Uh, uh, Norma actually recommended you coming on because I didn't. Well, I'm uh, now uh, knee deep in the uh, in the uh, Steve Jobs book, uh, and uh, with everything going on lately, uh, you, you're a former employee up there at Next. At Next, that's right. I was there from 1993 to 1995. It was a it was a wonderful place. It was one of the, it's. Uh, I haven't had that many jobs in my life, but um, but it was it's certainly top two. Maybe the best. You know. so. not, not, certainly not better than my own company. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that would help. Uh, but for those who don't know, like Next Computer was Steve Jobs' uh, kind of interim company between Apple and Apple. Of course, he didn't know at the time. I mean, that was the thing after Apple. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. He went and did this, and uh, from what I, I, I didn't actually. I've learned so much about it because I, I really didn't know much about Next except for it's what uh, what we know as Mac OS X was based on. Uh, a lot of stuff there. Like I didn't realize it was it was originally for educational uh, use. You know that was one of the challenges at, of working at Next was we hopped around from business model to business model. Um, uh, I joined after the hardware got abandoned, but originally the hardware was kind of the big deal. They had a very really state of the art manufacturing facility for creating the new computer, the new workstation um, in uh, out, out in the Bay Area in California, and. So the hardware itself was kind of the big sell at the beginning, but at that time, you know, this is the the early '90s. Um, good PCs were becoming commoditized. You know, the whole that whole industry was really, really changing, and the high end, really super fancy um, proprietary system that Next built just didn't just didn't fit the market need. You know, the costs were all being driven down. So they they dropped the hardware and kept the software, and then, like you said, the software became Mac OS X. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, you, 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 you know, emailing with you in, in advance of this, you, you seem really excited about your time there. Uh, you, what, what all, what all did that entail? 
I got hired. I mean, literally, I was interviewing while they weren't doing, you know, no one knew that this was happening, but while they were like laying people off from the hardware. So my, I almost didn't get a job there if someone who had been working there had wanted to do what they were interviewing me for. Mm-hmm. And what that was, was, um, this is, this is back in the day when we wrote manuals for software, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and hardware. Um, I, I was the editor of a support magazine. So I would talk to all the support engineers and we would every quarter put out like this beautiful printed magazine that explained how to run next computers on a network or how to just use your next computer. And then over time, that kind of went really well. And I did one, a similar magazine that we put out every quarter for users, you know, like, did you know about this feature? Did you know about that feature kind of thing? And, um, and then changes in the company, I ended up kind of running the whole, uh, I was not head of the documentation as a whole, but I was head of, of production for making printed stuff. And so it was kind of awesome. I learned, I actually learned probably more about design there than at any other point in life. And the people we worked with were fantastic. It was, it was really, you know, like you felt like you were part of something that was changing the world. You know, it was, uh, everyone was, everyone was brilliant. We had espresso machines. <laughs> it was just, it was an exciting kind of, kind of a thing. So this was this is kind of like what we see now with uh, all the startups and everything with the craziness, like like you know oh I guess oh I guess it's Steve Jobs. I was reading in the book about uh, the initial office uh, had the glass staircase, which I think an engineer told him they couldn't do. And of course, this is the same kind of staircase <laughs> that they feature at the uh, at the Cube Store uh, in in uh, in New York that we've been to, Chachi. Yeah, uh, I know. So I mean, so it, it had to have been pretty extravagant. You know, the offices were really, you know, everyone had an office, for example, for all, for uh, at the beginning, I think, and then eventually they moved some to cubicles. But in, in the documentation group, which just so you know, is like the lowest of the low <laughs> of the groups in a company, mm-hmm. um, we like each had our own office. Uh, and, you know, floor to ceiling glass with beautiful shading, you know, they were, it was a very well appointed place. But you have to remember that I was coming from well, you don't, maybe you don't know this. I was coming from Oracle, <laughs> you know, huge database company, which, which too had just, when I got hired there, I only joined companies when they've had huge layoffs. I joined there right after a huge layoff. <laughs> and Larry Ellison, who I think, you know, is Steve Jobs. If you've been reading the book, you know, he, he and Steve Jobs are very good friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, also very focused on mu- amazing design and, and gorgeousness. So maybe I was a little jaded at that point. You know, uh, and it wasn't as nice as what Pixar, for example, if you ever seen any pictures of Pixar's office mm-hmm. space. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got it, that's really awesome. It's ridiculous, is I know, what it is. I know, Chachi, Chachi, and I have both watched the uh, the Pixar story, isn't it, on Netflix right now? And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. So. I want to share this with you. Um, I spent a lot of my time at Next being jealous of the people at Pixar. It's like <laughs> you know, the, we were. I felt like we were the neglected child. That Steve, in those two two years, ninety three to ninety five, I just felt like he was spending way more time with Next than he was. I mean, with uh, Pixar <laughs> than he was with Next. So you were so hmm. you were like the redheaded stepchild of uh, Steve Jobs' companies at the point. That's at the right, time. and I have red hair, so I really need to be felt it extra. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, did you have any uh, interactions with Steve? I had a couple. You know, it was a small place when I got there um, I can't I and you I, I, maybe you can look this up faster than I can it was either 250 or 350 people when I joined mm-hmm. um, so I didn't like run into him every day also I was terrified of him so <laughs> so there's that but um, hey, hey, I met him at a, a, is, a, is, a is, staff uh, document what were you going to say? I'm sorry. I was saying his reputa- yeah, reputation even have... then really preceded itself. Right. It, yeah. it, so yeah, the competition, the, the, and he's he's supposed to be really scary, but also like you're starstruck. You know, you're mm-hmm. you're hired at this company by this guy. He like created the Apple. You know, <laughs> <laughs> amazing stuff. And I had been I had been part of the Next User Group, the Bay Area Next User Group beforehand. I edited their like quarterly magazine, which is I think part of how I got the job. Um, so you like starstruck every time, like I, I, if I would see him like in the hallway, like one time I saw him and he had new glasses and I, I like stuttered out literally. It's like nice glasses. Like that's how I said it. Right. <laughs> so, um, so I can't really say that I like had a rapport, you know, but I met him like early on, like he shook my hand when I at a meeting, the doc, he'd like poke, poked his head into a meeting that I was in and my boss introduced me and I shook his hand and I, I've told a lot of people this, but his hands were like really, really soft. Like, like if like you see the Pillsbury Doughboy on TV and you imagine like squeezing him, that's how Steve Jobs' hands feel. Oh. Uh, I'm tweeting, I'm tweeting a quote. Steve Jobs' hands were like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, 
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Chachi's Maybe losing it on the couch. Oh, it's show title. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> oh, sorry. You all right over there? Yeah, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. All right. All right. That's um, amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Rob, you got anything? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> wow. I just want to make but sure I did one time around. see him choose someone out. I mean, he, I didn't work with him enough to, to have that level of engagement. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there was... Um, there was a, the, the one time when I saw, again, again I, I don't think he was around or he, he was around and we just didn't, I don't know. Anyway, we were all, the whole company was gathered, it was a compulsory com- company meeting um, uh, on the floor of the building that Steve was in. So like right, this large sort of area. And we're all sitting there to see him demo something for us. And I imagine it was, if I can remember, like memory doesn't completely serve, but, you know, we had Next World just like there's Mac World now. Okay. So, um, so for next world, you, you know, he would practice his demos and things, but he also needed to show us something that not everybody had already seen. This is how I remember it anyway. Um, so he's going through the demo and he's doing his Steve, you know, reality distortion field kind of thing. And of course we know more than your average audience because we've built some of the stuff he's showing. Anyway, something broke and he flipped completely flipped i mean he chewed out this poor guy who is somebody i worked with all the time who i mean you i mean there's just no way that he deserved the kind of tirade of abuse that he got Mm -hmm. and you know you're thinking at the time at the time i hope that guy keeps his job and also there's no need for this and also god i'm so glad that's not me you know so other other you know i'm part of an email list that of x next x next people and other people do not have this kind of like rem- remembrance of, of him being awful. And I just, I, I think there's a variety of ways that you can have experienced your time there. So uh, um, I guess mostly I, I'm, I'm actually in some ways kind of sad that I didn't engage with him enough that I have stories like that because some of my colleagues who did, you know, they respected him and they like felt they gained his respect and it's part of, I think that's part of why people admired him so much that he cared so much about stuff, but also it was so out of proportion. He could be so out of proportion to reality. You know? it, it, it does seem like uh, uh, from what I'm uh, interviews in the book that I've read so far and afterwards, uh, it, it does seem like just like he, he kind of lay with everybody, what, you know, great or a bozo, I think it was. Uh, it, it seems like people are, are grading him the same way as well. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, and it, it had to been a hard hill to climb for those that kind of like, I guess, you, you think you think the ones that like have a more fondness kind of understood him more that they could deal with them or it, maybe it's just patience. I think it also had to do with when you joined the company, like how big it was, whether mm-hmm. you actually had to interact with him, you know, a lot like the people who maybe worked directly with him or joined when there were like 10 people, you know, they, they're going to naturally feel different than someone who joined like me with a couple hundred people. You know, you've got that law of 150 people that you can really know. So mm-hmm. I think that has to be part of it, too. Uh, you raised a question uh, preparing for the show uh, that, that I put in the notes here. Uh, would you like to share that? First, to I'll, think about. I'll, I'll read it the way I wrote it. Um, <laughs> do you have to be an asshole to create and run an industry industry leading company? I've actually, you know, this has been a like a quest for me, kind of trying to figure this out because, like I said, I worked for Larry Ellison too. I think anyone will tell you that he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've worked for people who were not jerks, and then the companies did not necessarily get very big. Now. Was it their personality and their way that they ran the company that made it? Was it the other people that they surrounded themselves with? Um, I don't know. It's part of why I left next was to go back to business school and kind of figure out what's what. But I mean, you look at like Henry Ford, mm-hmm. you know, nothing, not, not a lot of human value there in some ways, <laughs> you know? I, you know, I, I honestly think that you do. Like, I, I think you have to be it. Can I say it? Yeah, go ahead I, for this one. I, I think you kind of have to be an asshole mm-hmm. to get to that level. Like, there's the or it, like, you know, like business in that. general is just too ruthless to I, not be. Let me rephrase that. You don't have to be a complete asshole to mm-hmm. get to that level, but you have to have that asshole mentality. Okay, because yeah, I mean, you I, have I think... to be willing to to step up and tell someone when they're wrong or stop someone from. Uh, completely ripping you off or uh, screwing you over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, or, I think that what it is is that you have to be passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. And expressing your opinion with like a gen, no, it's not a disregard to other people's opinions, but basically saying like, no, 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 
you just you just close your mouth and do what I tell you to do, and everything will be okay. This being is an example of being extremely passionate and wanting to achieve your goals, and it comes off as being an asshole. Right. You know, it, it's it's, it's not hurt. even Rob's right. It's not even necessarily being an asshole, but even in everyday life, when you strongly voice your opinion. You can come with, out like with an asshole. disregard for others. Yeah. Uh, you come off as an asshole. Okay. So okay. I mean, and that's the way you have to be, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or else people are just going to walk on walk all over you, and you're not going to get what you want, which is probably your main well, your main goal. There's got to be a difference though between <laughs> saying what you think and chewing someone out for no real reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, no, no, yeah, you're right. There there, there's a, a tolerance that comes with it, and usually the tolerance of a very passionate individual is very low. I mean, if if you are like just totally cool with what everybody's doing, then you're very laid back. Chances are, like, you're not you you will certainly achieve things, but you won't achieve things at like a speed like Steve Jobs was able to do. I I think his real skill though was. Um, I was just, I haven't read the, the bio of him, but I was reading Malcolm Gladwell's more recent article in the New Yorker. He's, he's got two now. And this one, I think, really characterized Steve as I remember him, you know, brilliant and hard to be around. And what they, and how he calls him is, is he's like the, the ultimate editor. Like he takes other people's great ideas and realizes what's the good part of them, what's the bad part of them. And I think that skill is the important part. And he also just happened to be sort of charming and engaging and, willing, and able to like enlist you. And I think his charisma is why he succeeded, not his jerkness. Like, his charisma overrode his ability to make you feel like shit. Mm-hmm. I, mean, again, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we're allowed to swear here. But. I, I really I, – it's, oh, it's out the window for this one. Um, <laughs> I, I really think uh, he, he, was, he was definitely a troubled guy, you know. I, I mean, either way, you know, a genius aside – uh, and, uh, there was actually, uh, one of the, one of the shows I was listening to, I can't tell you if it was hypercritical or Mac break that I was listening to, cause it's all kind of blending together these days. Cause they're all talking about this. Um, but <laughs> they wondered like if he, you know, if Apple didn't happen and he had a nine to five job, if he even did that, cause he had a pretty hippie mentality back then, um, would he have dealt with the issues like that, that very, you know, I don't know. Can you call it bipolar to that some extent? What the, the way he he reacted to people? I think that's a great way to put it. Is, I think. It? I mean, I, yeah, I can't I believe well, it wasn't moody though. It was no, just no. egomania. Like it, he's yeah. the only it one who can be right. Over the top because he has like you know, I, I park the parking and handicap spaces. Uh, Honestly, you know. he, did, he he drove around without a license plate for a very mm-hmm. long time because he mm-hmm. calculated apparently mentally that it was better to just not worry about it. You know, what I mean, he's just gonna he could deal with the cost of the fine. But no. but if you walked around like that, I'm pretty sure you get labeled a sociopath and, and you're going to run into more trouble that you can't afford, you know, if you're one of us. Uh, but, you know, so so did did his success enable his problems? But hmm. Well, I, I feel like a lot of his I mean, his rage was never uh, uncalculated, mm-hmm. Like you didn't see him like punching reporters in the face for asking him too many questions. <laughs> No, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, no, like no. even the license plate thing, he wasn't just like, oh, you know what? Screw it, I don't care. Like he thought about it. There's thought. That yeah, that. yeah, and even even uh, uh you know, uh, uh, companies and and executives that he'd lash out at were were ones that he didn't care about. You know, yeah, or it's ones just, that there I don't. Was very I don't see concept. a way where you help me and my goals. Therefore, I'm going to completely put you off and and screw up any relationship you have with the company because I don't agree with what's going on here. Yeah, a lot of the worst stuff that you hear are people that worked for him or people who, like, witness other people who he employed. Mm -hmm. And that was basically him saying, hey, my name's on your paycheck. Why don't you listen to what I'm saying? My advice not be, like, logical, but trust me, just do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but still, I mean, is it it okay to demean someone just because you you have a better idea than them? No. Why is that good? He definitely lacked the people skills. It's it's, it's, it's weird because he understands. No, he had the people skills. He understands what people want. But I don't think he had the patience okay. to coddle people. Yeah, there you go. He had, there that, you go. that is true. He had no patience. That yeah, he just didn't have the patience to like put his hand on somebody's shoulder and say like, you know, try better next time. It's like, no, just you fucked up, and I don't like it. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, well, I mean, when you're dealing with that type of situation, I mean, you don't always have the time to walk up to someone, wrap your arm around them, and be like, all right, buddy, this is what you did. Mm-hmm. It was wrong. How about you go, can you please go try it like this? That way we don't look 
as bad next time. Let mm-hmm. me let me suggest this though <laughs> that there are people need to be led in different ways. That's true. Like yeah, some yeah. people w- are going to respond well if they're if a challenge is like thrown on their uh, thrown before them, and so someone who's been told being told that's this is this is crap you can do much better let's do it or this is crap i know you can make it good then do it and then other people are going to respond differently and so i think that you create sort of a self-filtering mechanism when you only when you create an environment that's only available to certain people yeah Mm -hmm. and so you have why shouldn't that be like limiting the uh, the capabilities of your company as a whole maybe after the company grows to a certain size and those people can kind of get in and hide <laughs> like somewhere yeah, in your company yeah. and contribute in positive ways as long as they aren't like near you or is it just you know uh, yeah the, the the limitations to you know the people that matched his vision i guess mm. right. although there was there was some fantastic examples on on where this worked more uh stuff like uh i think the mac the the original mac was coming out he wanted to get it out by a certain date of course and they say look we're going to need like two more four more weeks in order to do this correctly and it was some kind of math problem and he said no you're going to get it done and it's going to go out and they solved the problem i mean you know 90 hour weeks three days sleeping in the office or not sleeping in the office but they got it done um, it's not the most ideal of situations, but, you know, but, but being driven really hard for a deadline yeah. is different from being told that you're an idiot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. I don't it know. Is. It's, it, uh, you know, I think part of it too, is that I think there's a gender thing here as well, that I, a woman could never do this and get away with it. You know, think you think of Carly Fiorina or somebody like that, who has been a hard nosed boss mm-hmm. and then. And people call her a shrew and they comment on her appearance and blah, blah, blah. And a man who did the same things would not have the same, you know, feedback. Well, there's definitely um, and and that's and and that's probably a whole other topic entirely. But uh, there's there's definitely I get the feeling from the early points of this book of how much of a man's world it was for the technology. All of California was was, like that. It was it was it was crazy misogynist. It was it was it was insane. I I, I couldn't believe it. But it's like the 70s and. You know, sensitivities weren't real great back then. Do you know when I when I was in college, um, I, uh, I I majored in computer science at the beginning, and I mm-hmm. wasn't doing terribly well in the electrical engineering stuff, and that's actually uh, that was my downfall. I, I just I can only do so many differential equations. Mm-hmm. I kind of suck at it. But but you had to pass those <laughs> to to get a, a CS degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my advisor, <laughs> he's like, maybe you should just do documentation. Like literally, oh. like my oh. wife does that. You could do that, and it turned oh. out that's what I did. But at the same time, it's also kind of insulting. But also, I'm more insulted because he was right. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you about MIT. Well, and that, that brings up seven. that brings ahead, up another ahead. point, though. Mm-hmm. Maybe all these people who had bad interactions with Steve are so upset because he ended up being right. No, mm. no, no, no. I mean, I, mean I, I know lots of people who had bad interactions and. Like sometimes he, they pushed back, and he said that they were right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've had hey, these you had to well. fight. He it's, was not always right. It was actually, just an idea. At, at the point where, <laughs> I, I, from my Sorry. from my read so far, you're right, Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. That's fine. I am very capable of admitting when I'm wrong. You're very on jobs yeah. Um what, what even it, it, to the point where the one point uh, of this of this book, the the one that won, they gave an award of the one that stood up to Steve the most, and it was a woman like three years in a row. Mm. So I mean, I think what that's interesting name? too. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head here. Uh, but it didn't happen. It, it was an audio book, <laughs> so I didn't see the name. I'm more visual when it comes to something like that. Well, well, then stop listening I'm, I'm to audio books. I'm guessing it was the, the head of documentation before I got there because she always. Oh no, at or Apple. It the, or it was the lawyer? It was at it was at Apple actually. Oh, at Apple. Not not next yet. So, um, but yeah. I had one last next thing to share, if I may. Can I show? I told you, I showed you guys before. Can I show you show everybody? Okay. This is my um, this is my badge from when I was at Next. Can you see? There I am. There's the little Next. Logo and notice that it's an angle. The angle is extremely important. It had to be, I believe, it's twenty-seven degrees. Mm-hmm. You can't actually achieve twenty-seven degrees very well online. So it was twenty, like five point something <laughs> when it was digitized. But that's my little bit of memorabilia. And I do believe they had an argument over the color of the yellow in that E. Uh, only the one argument. Okay. <laughs> 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 but the great designer, and I think I think he used on one of the Apple projects too. Yeah, Paul so, Rand. Paul Rand. Yeah. So, oh, thank, thank you. That's uh, you know some some insight into next. 
Your life is a great place to be. Thanks for letting me share it. Your life, your life is a mystery. I always pictured next as Steve Jobs giving the finger to Apple. You know, it kind of was. It, <laughs> like, that's, that's, it's just like you know what you don't want me here. Fine. You know, but the interesting thing is the story of that, like he said, you know, he was still technically, I think, chairman of the board, uh, but they had pretty much ousted him from any functional right. no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, ability at Apple. But what he did was uh, I, I they were they, that the, the, ne- the original Next computer, which is just basically they were pushing the envelope. It was optical drives before anybody's using optical drives. It was all the stuff that ended up being our computer about five years later, I think, from from the way I understand it. But they were working on this project called the Big Mac at Apple. That was supposed to be this. It got axed when the new people came in because it was supposed to be something for the high end people, educational, whatever. Uh, And then he ended up uh, asking, hey, if you guys want to come along and they were going to get their resignation. And they said that he was uh, pilfering talent. Right, were, no, I understand that. I but, mean, uh, so it, it, I mean, it, it, it was matter. it was all the people. It was all the Steve Jobs followers. It seemed that were still in Steve's camp and liked the way he did things, and they just followed along to it. So I mean, it didn't matter how many companies he got ousted from; he was just going to keep going and starting new companies anyhow. because yeah, that's yeah. what he wanted to do. Yep. So. Uh, Imagine though, if he had like died in 1996 when things were really, really bad, then we would not be louding him in the same way and right. yet he would have been the same person isn't right. that interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like he needed that he needed a it, it's you know I, I i take that whole story about how he was ousted and then came back to be the savior as like you know you know that whole like when you have that girlfriend where you're like let her go and if it's meant to be she'll come back you know that's steve jobs with apple <laughs> <laughs> right wow how does that work <laughs> it does. I mean, oh, yeah, that's every time. Every time I hear about, oh, he got kicked out, and he came, they let, they they welcomed him back with open arms, and 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 this other company ends up being what we're running on now. You know, I mean, that's that's incredible. You that's know, pretty amazing. So, I, I, do you do you um you know you know Mac OS X? That's you know the next software basically has been adapted. Do you get a little bit of like you know, hey, it's still surviving in there every time you boot one up. I don't think of it every day. No, uh, <laughs> that'd be weird. But, that'd be weird. You know, um, and probably I should. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do, however, weirdly enough, my previous job, Oracle. Whenever I think about databases, I feel like I had more of a thing there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, let's uh, get into the news and more. There's news. There's news. There's stuff that happened oh, this week. Oh man, there was stuff. I bet you there's Google news. I know, you know how many? You know how many people are still talking about the Steve Jobs book? Though it's ridiculous. It's, Steve it's, Jobs is just going to be one of those people it's a that big continue. Book. I think it's a big book, and the people that bought it at first are just getting to the end. <laughs> I finally got my hands on it at a Sam's Club the other day, and one I think I want to buy for the pictures. Um, but uh, the, the thing is, that you're going to buy it for the it's pictures. Actually, it might be thicker than your thousand games book here. Yeah, actually, then I'm not no, carrying this is, that. This is about the size of the Steve Jobs book. It's kind of crazy. But I'm not carrying, <laughs> and it. it's not all in color like this one. So. I'm not carrying it. Where do it. I put this? You're not carrying it. That's that's why I got the audio book. <laughs> so that was uh, a... But yeah. you said you're more visual. That doesn't make sense to me. As far as remembering names... You don't read books, but you listen to a ton of audio. You make no sense. He's an enigma. <laughs> I'm a mystery wrapped in a clue. Um... <laughs> That's not right. Anyway, wow. so we get some stuff. All right, before you make uh, yourself sound more like an ass, let's all move right. on. All right. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, first we had a lot of follow-up from uh, our our portable versus what? We don't want to talk about this. You don't want to talk about this? No. Okay, I just, I just want to give a shout-out to Nero for that. This so hurts my head. This hurts your head. Why does it hurt your head? Because it was such a long thing on the Google Plus? No, the portable gaming. Okay. The smart but that's phone. important. Like no, everything's no. mobile now, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what would Steve Jobs say? What was Steve, what would Steve Jobs say about video games? Steve Jobs is the the cause of all of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's his fault. Oh jeez. <sighs> so I know what Steve Jobs would say. Would say he already said it. It happened. Moving on. And now you have an iPhone. Yeah. All no, right. I don't. I still have a G two. See, it's right here. And a BlackBerry. And you have an iPhone now. Oh, should, wait. Did I not give that to you? No, he didn't. Oh, hey, here's your new iPhone. I should probably there put, you go. I should probably put them together. Yeah, there you go. Now you have three phones. Look at that. <laughs> My bad. They're all together. Um, 
Uh, have you guys been following the? I have one of each. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> on a platter, You're on an iPad. Look at that. That's, that's, oh, that's not right. Oh, the iPhone's the one that fell. <laughs> oh, great. That's been a history. That's been that's been the trend around here. Um. Anyways, uh, well, well there's a big thing oh, about wow. uh, protect the IP. I think there was another act that was going through. There's a there's a on Congress and in, and in, in the House and everything. Uh, that was effectively going to break the internet. Have you guys been following this? Yeah, it's. Um, I like breaking the internet. No, not this way. Oh, <laughs> not in this way. Not in this um. fashion. And I want to thank uh, both Riz and uh, Jug- Juggalo John for sending us videos to understand uh, exactly what's happening and give us some visuals here. <laughs> uh, yeah, Protect IP is. Um, there was an earlier bill called the Combating Online Infringement and Counterfeits Act, mm-hmm. COICA. If you will, I believe that's the uh, one that would have made it illegal for us to lip sync songs. <laughs> Someone yeah. should do that. <laughs> uh, it's similar to the the Stop Online Piracy Act, which I think is the lip syncing one. That's the one okay. that was introduced on okay. October twenty sixth of this year. That's uh, SOPA. Um, so, put really simply, uh, this gives um, copyright holders access to stop. Uh, "Quote unquote rogue websites dedicated to infringing or counterfeit goods." Uh, one of the biggest problems with this bill is how vague all the wording is, which makes it so basically anybody who sort of, kind of, maybe may have mentioned at one time something possibly about something somewhere that may or may not have been copyrighted at any given time could be uh, subpoenaed and sued for all kinds of things and be "quote unquote" taken offline. But the only authority they have really is to. Um, they can go after all the supporting services. So, like, say, for instance, um, say, Mike, you uh, started an episode of Awesome Cast with uh, a song by Snoop Dogg. Oh, let's, oh, let's I need pretend. to take that off the plans. Let's let's pretend that happened. All right, I did that. Snoop Dogg is the shizzy, and I want to use him for the. He's so awesome. I want him on the intro of the Awesome Cast. All right, all let's right. do this, Rob. What happens? All right, so uh, this bill passes uh, hypothetically, and you use uh, Snoop Dizzy. <laughs> Snoop Dizzle. Mm-hmm. I cannot say that. Uh, Snoop D O double G. All right. Uh, all right as all the right. intro song once. Uh, Snoop Dogg is cruising the internets personally one day. Comes across this episode of Awesome Cast. Bye. Says, himself. hey, that's not cool. That song is uh, copyright. And I want to get my ducats. So um, he starts to uh, starts the process of suing you. You know, whatever. There's a process there. But more importantly, he can go after all of the supporting mechanisms. So we can go after uh, whoever your hosting company is. He can go after uh, any payment systems that are supporting the show. He can go after every single advertiser that is connected with the show. And the easiest thing for them to do, you know, is to, to pull the plug. Uh, but he can also go after the uh, the domain name system and have them pull awesomecast.com and make it so people can no longer type in an address to get to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so all of this can happen just because you did a thing that may or may not, you know, Has have worked been- out ruled on right yeah exactly um and it really like the the bare bones um of it is you basically have to do 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 you have to be dedicated to the theft of u.s property and in order to get that label uh some portion of your site or even a single page has to be directed towards the u.s uh allegedly engage in enable or facilitate infringement or allegedly be taking or have taken steps to avoid confirming a high probability of infringement that's it and an IP rights holder can uh, can start processing things against you. So this is going to go after specifically things like Twitter, YouTube, where people are sharing um, mm-hmm. copyrighted content mm-hmm. quite a bit. Uh, and as like a lot of people say, it breaks the internet. The funny thing is, after all of these steps, if for some reason, like you know, say you're hosting it on your home box, mm-hmm. uh, they can certainly go after your your uh, your ISP to get that taken off. But that box still has an IP address. So after all this, if like, you know, there's plenty of sites in Russia or whatever that get around a lot of these laws, content's still going to be up. Nobody's going to shut them down. You can still type in the IP address and nothing actually gets changed. But in the end, this is uh, the RIAA and the MPAA trying to get a workaround for any, any like legitimate laws against copyright. And, and I think the amazing thing is there's already a bunch of laws that allow those people to protect their rights. Why, why are why do we need more laws to do these yeah. wider things that are not really that are going to allow them all these extra rights that they don't that they shouldn't yeah. have? Exactly the same sort of kerfuffle that we've been seeing over the last couple of years over software patents uh, and that kind of thing. 
where there's mm-hmm. just like so much uh, legislative nonsense that really like doesn't help anybody and doesn't actually accomplish anything. It only hurts people and it hurts creative types. Uh, the same thing is being is being done to um, intellectual property on the internet, and this is. You know, every it's like every couple of months. You know, net neutrality is really important, and mm-hmm. uh, if if this bill passes, you know, it squashes net neutrality in a whole new fun way. And, and it's been it's been attributed to this is pretty much what they do with the Great Wall, of Ch- the Firewall of China. You know, mm. it basically makes the American uh, uh, internet systems as limited, uh, or a, a, the opportunity to be at li- as limited. And, and and it's not China making the rules; it's the music in the in the movie companies. Yeah, it puts which is uh, even scarier. It puts an incredible amount of power in uh, in the IP rights holders' hands, and I mean, rightly so. As a content, you know, creator, I should be able to protect my content, but you should be able to protect your content, like just as much as an officer cannot search my vehicle unless he has reason to do so. Mm-hmm. Sort mm-hmm. of business, and of but course- this is like. This is basically, you know, this is the sort of thing where an officer could knock on your door and search your house. Like we're talking about the same kind of stuff, but in an intellectual property. And of course, this is—I mean, uh, you know—we we had the big uh, day of censorship uh, last Thursday. Everyone put uh, uh, censor bars over their logos. I think Tumblr put censor bars over everything on the site. Uh, yeah, which was they generated impressive. an incredible amount of traffic doing that. Yeah, yeah, Tumblr. They, they sent out something like eighty thousand letters went out to Congress people as a result of the censorship on Tumblr for mm-hmm. that. It was like two hours one day. And this is this is you know you know when's the last time you've heard uh, people in this mass uh, getting angry enough uh, and, and doing something about it that aren't sitting on a street on Wall Street. Um, I was just going to say that's a terrible example uh, right now. <laughs> or a perfect example. I think it's part of the well, same yeah. kind of sense that we have more power now than, than or we've had the power all along, but now we're, we're realizing how, what, that we can use it. People get, yeah, yeah. Hey, and, and Rob, I think this, didn't you say something the other day, everybody needs to get, get mad? Uh, well, I was... <laughs> I was talking about the Occupy movement, and I was okay. quoting the movie Network. Um, but it's it's pretty much the same thing. Like you mm-hmm. know, things need to change. Whether you're behind the Occupy movement or you're behind this, um, and the first thing you have to do is get mad. Uh, the second thing you should probably do is contact your congressperson. Yeah, and let them know yeah. how you feel. Uh, uh, Rob, were you people. leaning out your window and screaming? Right, <laughs> like in Network. Yeah, they're near nearby you, aren't they? Get up out of your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Stick your head you. out. Oh, you. Oh, you. Get mad right now. Chachi, go yell at the window. Mad as hell. Tell Whoa! Beachview. Tell Whoa, Beachview how it is. There you are. There you are. But, uh, yeah, protect the internet. And uh, if you if you want to listen to Awesome Cast anytime at all in the future, you should care about this. <laughs> Who's the Mayhem password? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, it's... um um. And this is this is something that's uh, kind of turned uh, me to because I mean I've kind of uh, laid a deaf deaf ear on on politics for a while because I've had the you know really what I'm going to do what am I going to do about it kind of th- uh, attitude, but uh, this is a real good litmus for me to look at my politician I think to see what what are they voting on these kinds of things, you know I, I that that's my uh, kind of line to see you know is this guy you know full of crap or not, yeah because I don't understand half the other issues. I don't understand. I don't understand the healthcare issues. I don't understand the you know the, the you know the other stuff. It's just you know ridiculous. It's all going to get you know hashed out in the end, and the insurance company is going to win, right? Uh, right? But this is something I say you know is more more definitive to me. I say no, that's BS because I actually know what they're talking about, and they don't. Would it be great? Would it would be great to see that this also leads to like rethinking some of the IP laws themselves, which seem pretty out of date, particularly patent law. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you think of the whole way that we're using the internet now. Are people really going to stop creating stuff because we change copyright? I don't think so. I, I mean, it's pretty clear people are going to create things on their own, you know. And, and at what point do we just, does society realize that what it's doing is different from what it has said in law it wants to do? Right. You know. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. if you want to learn more, you should go to probably eff.org is the best place to go. Eff. This video has fightforthefuture.org uh, slash p. Which is down P-I-P-A. right now. Yeah, it's down right now. It's down right now. Okay, it, cause, so, because of this show, do you think we brought did, it down? Did we bring it down? Are we are we to that point? I don't I don't think so. It was down for a while. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> thanks, that's, Rob. That's not useful at all. You just that's crushed it. his hopes Sorry. and dreams. Yeah. EFF.org for more information. Yep, exactly. And I wrote a, I, and I put a video post up this on my blog, and some people are uh, are chiming in on that too over at Sorgatron.com. And if and if anybody so, has if anybody has read all the stuff and they still don't get it, uh, feel free to send us an email. Yeah. Happily break 
I mean, this is definitely one of those things we need to continue the conversation on, like off air and everything uh, as well. You know, not to get too big into politics or anything like this, but this is something that affects. This is uh, uh, not quite so awesome. Uh, and I'll I'll uh, retweet uh, these guys uh, their their videos uh, on the Awesome Cast account now, uh, so so you guys can check it out and, and get information on it as well. Uh, so and, and and you know and and get mad like Rob said, mm-hmm. and yell on Twitter. So. <laughs> All right, let's get into the, the rest of the news we had. Uh, we, we, we have a little bit. Um, Google Music came out last week. I've been playing with it. Has anybody else? I'm probably the only one. Yep. I, uh, I, I read articles to try and figure, because when uh, iTunes Match was first announced, I got like really excited about it. But yeah, anyway, yeah. That's, as with all good things in our society, it creates competition. So everybody else has to come out with the same thing. Well, uh, uh, go ahead. So I, uh, Lifehacker actually had a pretty good article on uh, uh, iTunes Match versus Amazon Music versus Google Music. And basically it seems like uh, you've used Google Music so you can identify some of these things. But it seems like uh, iTunes Match is basically if you are embedded in the Apple ecosystem, it makes a lot of sense. Like if you have all the iOS devices and you're cool with that, you should probably get iTunes Match. Otherwise, if you have an Android device or uh, you are into more indie music, the uh, Google Music Store is the better place to go. Yeah, there's other places for indie music, of course, though too. No matter where, like Bandcamp or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. But as far as uh, cloud, I guess this would be like the cloud-based music collection right. service. Uh, yeah, I, I'm afraid of. The, are you guys afraid of the cloud? Am I the only one that's afraid <laughs> of the cloud? Like I don't want all my shit in the cloud. I, I embrace the cloud myself, uh, as you can tell, because I have 18,000 songs now on Google Music. Uh, you know, <laughs> and that was free to do. And granted, it's, the, it's not the greatest integration with my iPhone, uh, but I, I, let me see if I can show you guys here. Uh, let me go on a better camera here. And uh, that's wrong. That's still Chachi. Uh, but there, there's two ways that you can get at your music on the iOS. Uh, one is something called G Music. Was a dollar. Uh, I've been talking a lot with AJ about this. He's embraced this. Uh, but there's one called G Music. It mostly works, but uh, I've had problems where it doesn't load entire songs. Let's see if you can it's kind of crazy, kind of crazy there. Uh, it's and, a more and, kind and it, of thing there. Yeah. <laughs> and it takes forever to load, as you can see. I, I mean, I'm even on Wi-Fi, but it might be a little weak down here. Uh, and it hasn't uh, uh, updated with all of my songs just yet. But it's mostly, you know, your typical kind of deal. Let me try to load up a song here. Uh, you know, so I can get, you know, violate one of these new laws they're about to pass. Uh, so, yeah, it, it comes up the album and everything, just as you expect from, like, say, iTunes or any other music app or Pandora or something like that. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty typical, right? I don't think that, and, and this is the problem I've had. I don't think the song is playing. No, well, no. there is that issue where, you know, you have to be always connected. And, and uh, again, we're up here in Butler. We're a little bit more rural. Exactly. So maybe we're not exactly. always I mean, it's fun, more fun for the big people in the big cities where you've got constant connection. The other option you have is to actually go to music.google.com, and uh, it seems to work a little more reliably. Uh, you just have a nice HTML5 interface there, and uh, if I click in, if uh, my connection is working down here. You know, Mike, you're not really selling me on this no, whole Google no. <laughs> <laughs> But Shashi will have a lot better experience. <laughs> Because <laughs> everything you put up there is automatically synced over to an Android phone. And since more people have an Android phone, it makes more sense. I'm trying to work around it, but I still like it seems to make more sense to me than than iTunes match. At this Why do you point. Say that? Uh, my stuff is, you know, just there. I don't have to pay for anything. Um, and uh, is uh, is, there, is 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 Google Music free? Is that a thing? Yeah, I'm not paying anything. I'm pretty out of touch on this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I've done here versus, you know, basically doing more or less the same thing with iTunes Match is free. Yes, I had to upload all 18,000 tracks. Thankfully, I have a good connection. Uh, so if you're on like DSL or something, you might have to think twice about this. Uh, but, uh, you know, versus iTunes doesn't upload everything. It identifies most of the stuff, uploads everything that's not in its library, which, you know, unless you listen to a lot of weird nerdcore that's not on iTunes... Uh, you know, you're going to, it's going to be a lot quicker in the long run. Um, I, uh, I imagine that the service providers are salivating over the idea of people syncing their entire or streaming their entire music collection via their community. Device. Well, they, we're already doing it with Spotify. We're doing it with iTunes match. iTunes match is not technically streaming. It will download yeah. the song as you listen to it, apparently. And I guess it's pretty seamless. Yeah. So, 
Um, it, it sounds kind of clunky. That's going to take up a lot of space on your phone. But uh, it seems that might, you know, work out a little better than people think. But I, I was scared away from all the problems people had with identification at the beginning. But uh, but uh, but still, I, I still have my entire collection, at least in the browser. Like I said, here's the interface here. And uh, let's see. Let's click on some boom chicka boom chani cash. And uh, and I got a player right here and it works pretty good. I was listening to it at one of my uh, at one of my clients places uh, working the other day. And uh, yeah, it's pretty robust there. So I this is uh, revisited me revisiting all the music I've collected over the years, you know, versus what Pandora has been giving me. Uh, What's happened with me is that like uh, uh, once I used to have, you know, like the giant collection of music. Mm hmm. Uh, that was like, oh, here's my first spare hard drive for one quarter of my music collection, just like ungodly amounts of music. Uh, and then I got a laptop, and my laptop spent a little bit on my desk. I still used portable hard drives. And then my laptop, because of just the way I work, like became mostly mobile, and I needed all of that space for, for content, for video content, for proxy devices, things like that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there wasn't any room on the laptop for music anymore. So I still have a giant collection of music that I don't use that sits on my Drobo in a spare folder. But pretty much everything is like the four albums that are in iTunes. And then uh, then it's all like Pandora. Yeah, and I, and I haven't really been touching base with a lot of my old music either. But I'm kind of revisiting. I haven't bought music in the longest time either, you know, other than what's you know sent to me for review copies or you know uh the random hey go get the mc front a lot album or uh or or mac miller go buy the album uh, or uh or, or something like that so right. do you but, still like keep up like a separate backup of all of this stuff somewhere like what if what if you know i don't know what nuclear explosion happened or whatever that that all of your collection that you uploaded well, went away somewhere i have about 14 dvds of my music plus i have like uh backblaze DVDs. Yes, my, my. <laughs> but that's from like years ago. That's before I had Backblaze. Uh, so everything's up there. Um, I would say, and this can be. Uh, are we are we still sponsored by Drobo? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, it's still at the beginning of the show. All right. Um, I would say if you are trusting uh, any or all of your data in general to the cloud, you're being really foolish. Okay. Uh, just as like I'm not I'm not pointing fingers here. I'm just saying like generally, if you put all of your stuff in the cloud. It's foolish because it's, you know, you're, no matter what, you're still putting your stuff on a hard drive, mm -hmm. even though you're putting it on like, you know, several hundred hard drives in this case. But you're still putting your stuff in a data center. And trust you me, data centers can burn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or Tsunamis are all over the place. Or uh, go out of business like Backupify did recently. Um, exactly. Yeah. So the smart thing to do yeah. is to keep, you know, like we always say, you want to keep three copies mm -hmm. of everything. Is a three and, and, and the stuff's on my Drobo. Three uh, copies, two different media. And it, then, it's on my Drobo. It's up in uh, uh, Backblaze, and now it's up on Google Music uh, in the long run. I don't know if you can retrieve it from Google Music, but it's there as long yeah, as they're yeah. going to have it there. So, uh, you know, I think that's a little more safe. Plus, half of the music I have are on CDs. Well, that's the case. So, I, mean, I guess I'm just saying that's what's happened for all the stuff you put up there. But now when you start acquiring stuff and getting it straight there, you have to add this extra step in to true. remember to download it. That's true. That's true. Uh, well, anything I buy on iTunes, it, it, it actually uh, it's getting its song list from iTunes. So okay. I go buy the Mac Miller album like I'm going to after on Rob's suggestion. Uh, I'm going to, you know, it's going to download in iTunes and it's automatically going to sync up to Google Music. So now I have it in two places. I can access it from whichever I want to. You know, I can get it off of my iCloud on my phone because I bought it on iTunes, or you know, get it off the stream somewhere else on Google Music. So let me let me ask a, a weird kind of thing. So there's a couple summer, summers ago when I listened to a lot of Elliot Smith, like over and over and over. Okay. And if you if anyone monitored my listening habits for a while, they would have gotten the sense possibly that I was deeply depressed and possibly suicidal. No, I wasn't. <laughs> But my point is, so now, in addition to um, people having your music and you having to download it, you know, your your listening habits are being tracked. Do we that, care? That's mostly, well, it, well, Spotify is an issue because it's publicly announced. I think by well, default you tell is the it. issue. Sorry? You tell Put it that too. Yeah. Uh, is it? Is, I, I, I mean, it was, someone knows. That yeah, know. yeah. Well, somebody knows, like, you know, iTunes knows exactly everything I downloaded uh, they have that ping thing as well. If you haven't set that up right in Google Music now, so I mean, real, I, ooh, it, yeah, that that is an issue. I guess that. Well, that, it's it's one of those things that it depends on how sensitive you are to your own to your own privacy, right, and, and right, it, right. it depends on how it's being used and, and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. I mean, if it's one of the we, we've had the talk on the show before about people who get really upset about when they find out that when they use the little dongle at the supermarket, that the supermarket keeps track of your buying habits. 
right? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. It's, it's the exact same. I mean, if, but if so, I buy a lot of mayonnaise, man, my cholesterol is probably not that good. You can draw these conclusions. Right, right, right. Uh, but, I, I ask but, more as a devil's advocate than anything else. But, uh, you know, it does feel kind of, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure at what point I'm going to decide I don't want people to know what I'm doing. It's but like, I feel like that point is going to come. It's like leaving that uh, leaving that thing up where the uh, the the art for the movie you watch uh, on on Netflix comes up in your Xbox account. You know, <laughs> does that does that color what you listen to <laughs> or watch or anything like that? You know, that's another question. Are you like, am I being judged by my musical tastes? Well, you are. are am I being judged that I'm listening to the Pokemon soundtrack? I mean, <laughs> you know. In yes, you are. Yes. I, oh, no, you are. I am. Yes, you am. are. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, speaking of Pokemon and Sesame Street. Uh, <laughs> transition acquired. Transition <laughs> acquired. Uh, one of my coworkers emailed Pandora about why Sesame Street kept showing up <laughs> on the station. Yes, this has been a long-standing problem with you. He gave us a, uh, a tutorial on how to fix it. Really? Yeah, like, no kidding. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick. There is a step-by-step process to figuring out why your Pandora station is is playing really weird things. <laughs> and it's it's apparently Pandora is, uh, I've got the email here. So they are aware of the problem. This is like a bug, apparently. Uh, it's it's not a bug. It's basic. It's kind of like that you let something slide. Like you didn't declare an opinion oh, about so, something, so, so it got your, added as a seed. So it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, uh, he said... Uh, is There's not like some N. one weird guy who like has the same taste in you in one thing and then also is like really into Pokemon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, the system is like you don't know, but you could like Pokemon. It could happen. Uh, this is Josh M from Pandora Listener Support. He says uh, what's likely happening here is that you have an errant seed that is in the station definition. This can happen very easily when you add variety and don't read the entire name. Additionally, sometimes a listener may add a name that they think is one thing but is actually another. You should take a look at the definitions of the stations on which you are hearing uh, songs that are wildly out of place. Select that the station that's causing you trouble. Click on options under the station name. Click uh, station details. And on the station page, you will see the artist seeds and track seeds. You can click on the X next to any of the seeds to remove them. Oh, wow. There you go. I love the phrase errant seed. Errant seed. Sounds dirty. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> also, could be a show title. Um, but other than that, the Google Music is interesting. It, it, it's obviously uh, another step to integrate Google Plus. Uh, if you're an independent artist, you can go make a page. It doesn't take much. I'm actually considering testing it out and throwing some old uh, uh, of our rap songs out there uh, that I know are, are legal. Uh, you know, just see see how it does. You know, uh, but. Uh, uh, you can you can oh this is the other interesting thing if you uh buy i believe buy a song and share it on google plus everybody in your circles can listen to the entire song once That's very not spreadable. a preview not a preview or anything like that they'll actually listen to the whole song so if you buy an album you just you could just share that entire album with your once 100 and uh, what do i have 30 some people in my circles once so once but Why still, that's them more? That, that's a pretty big step for the record industry that wants to break the internet. So, well, what mm. they're hoping is that, that your friends on Google will listen to it once mm-hmm. and they then run buy out, it. Yeah, yeah run I mean that, that's the it. idea. It seems to make sense, right? So, uh, you know, why not? So until someone is creative, creative enough to create a grabber tool. Well, it's not. Well, I say once you're playing the song, yeah. it's not hard to grab it off right. of that. So. Yeah, they already exist. I mean, if you can hear it through your speakers, I can make a copy of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob, I know you're very in tune with the political things going on. You're getting angry. Uh, like, have you heard about the Occupy? Occupy? Don't just stand there. Get angry. I'm going to get angry. Are you? Have you heard about the Occupy Flash movement, Rob? Get a job, hippies. I heard something. <laughs> get a job, Flash hippies. <laughs> Uh, um, so there's all right let's talk about idiots on the internet there's occupy flash (laughs) which is uh the sort of thing that if you read daring fireball they're basically saying the same things that john gruber's been saying for years Mm -hmm. uh giving pro tips on you know you can still use the internet without flash uh which is it works if you're really against flash then you know that's that's great uh and then the occupy html thing uh is uh, a misnomer because they're not like when you think about okay, Occupy Flash, but this whole thing—I hate using the Occupy name as like a funny thing. <laughs> it's the in thing now, though. 
It's so bad. Uh, so the Occupy Flash people are supporting getting rid of Flash. The Occupy HTML people are saying, wait a minute, Flash is good every once in a while. Let's not lose our pants. What? But they're the same people, aren't they? But they're all the same people. <laughs> Um, well, there are people who are like, no, Flash is the devil. And let me tell you, I hate Flash just as much as anybody else. But at the same time, every once in a while, Flash is a handy tool. I it's use it every day. It's not the devil. And it's not the devil. It has its moments. The right. reason that Flash became a problem was because people said, I need a website, which means I need Flash. You know for I mean? my restaurant. Yeah, for my restaurant. Oh, get me started. Look at my <laughs> dancing chicken! <laughs> um, Flash is a tool, just like HTML5 is a tool, and JavaScript is jump a tool. Stick, jump stick, jump they stick, all have jump their stick. applications, but if you try and use you know, a monkey wrench to open a bottle of beer, like, yeah, it works, but it's not smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, odd, uh, oddly, I have a picture on my Instagram of somebody just doing that. Yeah, I think I, I saw that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the design of the Occupy Flash website, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's the website here? It, it, I guess OccupyFlash.org. Of course it is. We'll see what that's about. I, I'm going to go occupy your couch. <laughs> My couch? Yes. And you can see, I mean, it's the same as the Occupy HTML. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, just, it's the same thing. Well, nice big letters. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, 16 point apparently is the, uh, uh, 16 pixel is the apparently Man. the... The size of the day. Oh man, they use the words uh, "the manifesto" on their web page. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, the, the the other Occupy sites uh, could, for real. could take a note from this because they are not designers, from what I've seen so far. So, the square. medium is the message. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this exactly. It's a it's a fancy. Uh, what I the other thing I really really like is you know how when you um, are using an old browser or something or somehow your flash is not working you get that flash is not installed. I love their use of this little widgety thing that says flash is currently installed with the little smile with the little frowny face. <laughs> I think that is very cute. Um, the Bobby F J Town in the uh, chat says uh, they should use be all up in flash's business instead of occupy. <laughs> so I, I, I don't. <laughs> that is way better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shaking my head, perpetually shaking my head. At this point. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, other stuff. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, John Carmen uh, codes around patent to release the Doom Three source. Of course, you know Quake, the old Doom engines. John Carmen. John Carmen. John Carmen. John Carmen's been really busy. John Carmen's been busy. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But apparently, uh, since they, they put out Doom 3 and oh my god, was it 2003 that they did this? Um, Creative Labs apparently uh, independently developed a very similar method for rendering shadows in a 3D environment. Although the technique is commonly known as Carmax Reverse, according to The Verge, uh, the patent went to Creative. So the lawyers didn't really uh, weren't really cool with that going out to the public. Uh, so they just... Uh, so John Carmack uh, took a afternoon with a bottle of whiskey and just coded around it like a coding wizard that he is. So, um, as long as that code remains free, everything's good. But exactly. Exactly. Happens, so, loses. Salvation I, Army. Oh, go ahead. Doesn't that just kind of talk about how like lame uh, the um, the patenting is, you know, for code? Because there's like got to be twelve ways to code anything. Yeah, sure. yeah, it's it, it's it's a functional thing. It's like it's like it's like patenting, you know, taking uh, 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 opening a Coke bottle with a wrench. Mm. Or you can't know, it just it, it just reminds me how you know? angry I got when Amazon, I think it was Amazon, patented the one click buy. Like yeah. how lame! Like that's yeah. a business yeah. model. No. Or the uh, the swipe, the swipe to unlock, and now <laughs> I, I think the Amazon horrible. the Amazon Kindle swipes the other way. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. We're uh, gonna have like little gestures for how how you do different unlocks to get around IP. Yeah, Oops. yeah. Does it? Does it don't don't uh, Android devices have this like pattern going on over there? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a dual uh, a dual swipe method. Mm -hmm. um, one, and I don't know if you can you can see. Uh, no. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> one of them unlocks, Try and the one. other one, like if I do. This is hard to do backwards. Hold on, wait. You have the other camera. Hold I do. On. Have, Let's go to the other. Let's camera. do the crotch. Go, cam. Try that. Try the crotch cam. But uh, and speak into the mic. I I can't do both. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one unlocks. 
and it keeps my screen settings are really quick. This one unlocks, so if I okay, and this one demonstration because uh, nobody has an Android phone. Yeah, it changes the volume settings. Okay, so if I now the the ringer's on. Okay, but now the ringer's off. I don't know. Well, it's still a slide. I don't know. Maybe it is. The royalty or something. They it's, all. It's still weird. They all slide. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's just it, the whole patent, and it's not even just software patents. As somebody who used to work for an inventions company, I can tell you that regular old patents are plenty broken as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And for every you know, for every like one click by interface thing, there are legitimately hundreds of other patents. There's actually a, an agency that is responsible for you know checking to see if a patent is legitimately unique. Mm -hmm. And it was brought before Congress. It has been several times that basically saying like, okay, let's take a random example. Here's a patent for a thing. Well, here's 5,000 other things that are exactly the same thing, but somehow they got approved by the patent agency. Oh. Oh, no. I mean, if you're going to have patents, it's, it's a severely underfunded agency. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And then, and yet we hold it in this huge esteem. It's like a huge part of our economy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. So. It's, it's something that's so underfunded and doesn't get like in in the in the like keeping the books kind of way does not get the support it needs. But at the same time, if you infringe on someone's patent, it means you can take their life away from them. Right. Get angry. <laughs> oh, get mad. That's the next thing. Occupy patents. Uh, <laughs> how, does, how does that even occupy the patent office? No. It's a small place. Stop sucking. Yeah, it was. It, Stop no. sucking. I'm into that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, did tell me about the futures of entertainment. I went to this conference. Uh, I, this is the this was futures of entertainment five, and I had also gone to one. It was cheaper then, um, and this was at uh, up at MIT, and the uh, the folks running it are focused on sort of like the convergence of media, but also looking at. I mean, we talked, it was, so it was a very MIT conference. We spent um, two solid days sitting in a very nice classroom, um, listening to panels of people talk about things. And then in the back, there's like a back channel running and people like criticizing things on the back channel. It was, it was kind of glorious that way. It was good fun. <laughs> a lot of Twittering and, and chatting and stuff like that too. But, but we talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about, um, they talked about, and then we, we griped about, um, New models of funding, crowdsourcing, um, lots of stuff about fan bases. For for some reason, I don't. I, maybe you guys do you, do. you guys watch any soap operas? Um, no, I can't say that I do. Yeah, when neither I neither do I. It. But 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 actually, yes, the we most do. Most interesting fan bases in the world are the soap opera fan bases. They're very active online. Wait, Chachi, what was that? I said yes, we do. We watch wrestling every week. That's true. Sometimes three times a week. Right. Well, I that's watch, a perfect example. I watch once. A week. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, you were saying? Um, and so that kind of stuff, that, there was a lot, there's a lot of talk, uh, there's a lot of study about soap opera fans and how they interact with each other, um, how they keep the shows alive by protesting, how they interact with the sponsors to help the sponsors make the show stay alive. You know, there's been some good case, cases recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really fun stuff. Uh, and you linked a couple of things here. Uh, wreck a movie. Uh, this is interesting. So there's this movie um, called Iron Sky, and and you need to check out the trailer. It looks like an interesting movie. The premise I've of the movie is this: before. that in 19, um, you know, at the end of World War II, all the Nazis disappeared, and what they did was they all got on rockets and went, and they've been living on the dark side of the moon. They've been living <laughs> on the back of the moon, and now they're coming back. <laughs> next year. This is the premise of the movie, and so what's interesting about this? It's being made in Europe is that they are crowdsourcing the movie. They're like the script and, and like the guys that are in charge are in charge. It's, they call themselves a benevolent dictatorship. Um, so they are making all the creative decisions, but they are inviting input from people online and they are inviting people <laughs> online to contribute things like how to do the graphics for the spaceship. And so you, through this crowd, crowd, and they're also inviting people online to, to be funders and to get, you know, executive producer credit and blah, blah, blah. Um, but so what's interesting is, to me, the idea that you would invite people, you know, they have a call out for people to contribute, like, the sketches for the ship, or, like, the, the rendering of the ship. Um, and people would contribute, knowing that they're not going to get paid, but they're just going to get credit, mm -hmm. you know? Interesting. 
It, yeah, it's, and then John, John and Chad, I agree. I, I've heard of this before, and I, I can't remember why. Uh, but this has definitely come out of something. Uh, it might be making the rounds on cons or something like that. But, now, uh, Wreck a Movie is is the is like the infrastructure for making the crowdsourcing happen, okay. and it's open. It's available for anyone to use. I think for no charge to crowdsource your movie or your short or your video. So it's like a more kind of in depth Kickstarter sort of thing, maybe. Right, right. Interesting. It's not just money, but but more more creativity. Mm-hmm. Now, what was interesting also was ha- hearing the guy. You know the the. Um, I think his name is Timo was the guy that was at the panel saying that the, uh, and there was, there were a couple other crowdsourcing people there. They all had to build their own tool for doing the crowdsourcing. And all of them are like really jerry rigged, like behind the back, behind the scenes there. It's like completely hacked and, and kludged and it's nice. basically duct tape, electronic duct tape. Um, and so that's what this, these things are kind of running on. And I've, I've heard similar things about Facebook, the way that it's written behind the scenes, <laughs> that it's, you know, it's stuck together by spit and, gl- and gum, you know, uh, probably a little bit better now, but, um, than it was a couple of years ago. But, uh, but I think that's interesting too, that, that people are whipping this stuff up and throwing it out and creating a whole new market. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's, uh, this is a day and age where, they, you know, there's, there's really curious ways going on. I, that, that's a pretty cool. I can't wait to see how something that as hodgepodge as that, uh, might come together. So. Oh, so the movie is going to come out. So yeah, keep yeah. your eyes open. Iron Sky. The trailer we're playing said uh, uh, April 4th, 2012, I believe. So uh, go watch out for that. So uh, you also got one in here. Uh, Cow Clicker. <laughs> <laughs> I, this actually, uh, Justin Kanaki had, I think, Facebooked this or something. I mm-hmm. thought it was hilarious. Uh, I don't play Farmville. But this guy, there's a guy who hated Farmville. Hated it to the point where he created a parody game called Cow clicker say that three times fast and <laughs> and the idea of of cow clicker kind of like you know farmville you you know you're tending to your farm and you're buying stuff for your farm i guess i don't know but cow clicker is like reducing that to minimalist state so like you're paying to click a cow like the whole game the whole game is just clicking your cow other people clicking their cows and so people oh, no. like different um different media watchers and journalists liked it because they could see the parody aspect of it but a certain number of people just thought it was a game and thought it was enough of a game that they were playing it and kind of liked it and they're like paying to like turn their cow the other way you know i mean just crazy uh it it kind of i think that it it would be interesting if someone was a graduate student and kind of wanted to look at incentives and how people interact with things online how games work it would be a perfect case study to study like what is it about just I, I this was such a simple ridiculous game like simpler than tic-tac-toe that it would be a perfect case study for what it is about online games that we are hooked on so um <laughs> i actually went to it and the cows are gone and it says where did the cows go the in the news the cow apocalypse now they had uh, uh, the um what do they call it what what is the thing when all the people are gone that we were supposed to have twice this year and it's revelations uh yeah the um or uh, uh the, the reckoning reckoning no mm. uh, we're, we're all gonna hate each other when we realize what it is <laughs> the re- it's it yeah. is rapture rapture thank yeah. you chat room yeah. thank you chat room thank you bobby the spit on my keyboard i was so excited and they're all replaced by just their shadows like their shadows yeah are it was really weird <laughs> But yeah. so, and the people are c- clicking the cow shadows because they're clueless. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? It's fascinating. But you can still go and pay to uh, someday. <laughs> the not. cows are gone, but you can t- still still can supplicate and perhaps someday <laughs> ensure a second calming. No. Oh, that's funny. So you can still pay, you know, 4,000 credits. I don't want to hit the pay now because I'll probably end up spending money by accident. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> like, you, I think that it, for all of us, it's an important, uh, if you're trying to create some kind of a social media thing, it, it's a, this is a good case study in how you don't know how people are going to perceive your thing. You don't know how they're going to react to it. And incentive systems are hard, like trying to create the proper incentives. This was another thing they talked about at Futures of Entertainment. There, um, there was a guy there from Groupon. Uh, no, not Groupon. Uh, a guy there from Gowalla. And mm-hmm. there was a researcher there who had studied um, – uh, what is the thing that I do all the time? 
every every goddamn day. I check in. What do I check in with? Foursquare. 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 So there was a researcher there talking about Foursquare on the same panel as the guy from Goala. And you guys probably know this, but they were launched on the exact same day. <laughs> the, at South by Southwest, wasn't it? That's right. And, and yet um, Foursquare has taken off in so many ways. What was sort of interesting about Foursquare, though, was the badges and stuff. People got so engaged with the badges, they weren't doing the stuff that everyone – that the – creators wanted them to do about using the discounts. So they had to kind of rethink their incentive systems so that people would start to use the discounts more. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you make something too fun, uh, you, if you try to gamify things and you actually do a good job with it, you could screw your business model. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, it's the same exact thing that's happening with Get Glue. Is it? Yeah. I mean, because they have, when you check in to a TV show or something... Um, they have the company giving away discounts for their merchandise. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. So People, I just check in the office because I want a discount. No, you check into the office because you want the sticker. You yeah. ignore the fact that there's a 15% discount on everything the office sells. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get the but sticker. But you have people, like, fake checking in, checking in where they're not, checking in as they walk by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Gowala has all these ideas why they're going to they, – they've like – they totally rejiggered their plan. Oh, yeah. Um, and this guy – the guy actually who was there on the panel used to sell jet planes to very rich people. And he's now the guy doing like – I didn't – I forget his – you can look on the website and see his exact title. He was sort of very interesting just as a person. I don't know. I hope he never watched – well, maybe he'll watch this video. Hi, guy. You were very interesting. <laughs> um, Hello, you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but his whole the, – the whole like – rethinking how they were going to go after they already had an established base, that's a really hard problem to kind of think of how you're going to try and make money now when your first plan didn't work. That's a challenge, interesting challenge. And what their, what their plan is, is to kind of work more with, it sounded like they're going to, they're spending a lot of time with Disney, with the way that the Disney is doing game, um, the, the way that Disney um, theme parks work um, and try and create promotions around, around that more branded kind of stuff all the way along. And they're kind of viewing Foursquare as like doing your everyday stuff. But Gowalla is now going to be your passport to the world. Does this make, does this sound about right? Mm -hmm. So like Gowalla is where you go when you're doing something that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Yeah. And Foursquare is where you go when you're doing the same thing you do every day. Yeah. Go, yeah. Gowalla is like the place you, I, I, I went to, Rob went to Orlando, Florida. Doesn't know what the heck to do there. Hello, Gowalla. What do I do? You know, kind of thing. Nothing, because uh, there's nothing to do in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not internet. Um, like, I'm still trying to figure out. Like, I, I just installed the other day because uh, he was on uh, Twit talking about Oink, which uh, oh, this this camera here. I because I don't see what the incentive incentive is. It's like uh, everything else. You just like it's everything you like. Like, uh, and apparently Kevin Rose is the only one on it. Uh, I, I uh, Kevin loves Dig 1.0. Kevin loves stats uh, and food and, uh, and yeah, I don't know what, where they're going with that. But, you know, it's a 1.0. So. What, what's that, Rob? Facebook kind of already do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, everything like letting you like anything. To. Yeah, it, it, it's really, I, I, don't, I don't get it. It's oink. I don't get you know. it. But, but it's a, they, pig. They, they it's were, a pig. We were talking about that too, that, that Facebook becomes sort of where your souvenirs are. Like you go to a place and where in the past maybe you would get, I don't know, a sticker or something put on the outside of your suitcase. Mm -hmm. Now you take a picture and you put it on Facebook. So you see it, but more, but just as importantly, everyone else sees it. And so you're both remembering it for yourself and signaling to other people what you've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the questions come up recently. So when's the last time you haven't shared something you liked? Oh, that happens all the time. <laughs> so, I'm um, gonna start keeping it all for me. Yeah, yeah. What's your life? It's just for you. Sharing nothing with anyone. It's all for me. Okay. <laughs> On that note, I think we should wrap up here because Chachi's starting to uh, need his crazy pill. So, uh, Cindy, what's going it's on with you? Me. What can people go check out? Uh, uh, what, what what you're doing? Uh, well, my, my company is, is bigbigdesign.com, as you so generously pointed out at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the show. Um, I'm trying to blog more and get back into blogging on mybrilliantmistakes.com um, and uh, doing more theater blogging. So I'm, I'm, I, have a, I, have a, I have a hookup at Pittsburgh Irish Classical Theater now. Big thanks to them. Um, there's really good theater in Pittsburgh. I need to remind everybody that there's um, sometimes it's fun to actually be 
to watch something with other people sitting next to you as opposed to just always online. And um, Pittsburgh Theater is good for that. Excellent. Excellent. Go check that out. Rob De La Creta. Hey. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> At robjdlc.com. It still says he's drinking milk. Oh, he's not <laughs> drinking milk. I need to change that. That's funny. How long uh, ago is that from? <laughs> well, actually, I was. <laughs> Two when we started the show, I was drinking chocolate milk out of a Jack Daniels glass. Oh. So, so I mean, it's still, I mean, I have milk here to be zero. Uh, now it's appropriate. Now it's done? Now it's done? Now it's, now it's, now now, he's now, not um, drinking milk. Nice. I, uh, what am I doing? I, uh, I'm going to New Orleans next week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to NOLA. Use Goala. Much, much better than uh, than Orlando, Florida. But I'll be leaving on Thursday, so I will be on the show on Tuesday. And uh, I have a lot of I've got a lot of a lot of <laughs> a lot of projects I can't talk about. Wait a minute, again. you're leaving on Thanksgiving? No, next Thursday. Oh, next Thursday. Okay, next okay. Thursday. And all your um, secret hush hush. Yes, uh, and then I've got all the other stuff. Going on. I've got the cottonfactory.com thing. Going to have some big Black Friday sale type things. Put that out there. Put that out there. Uh, if you uh, if you use Bugzilla and you've ever encountered the uh, server not um, not crunching CGI files error, uh, if you could send me a message, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll have uh, I'll have some cool things to talk about shortly when they're not so hush hush. Excellent. Wise. Excellent. Transparent uh, monitors. That's all I'm saying. You still working ooh. in the? Ooh, you still we were work? just talking about that at work. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like how we wanted the uh, the transparent monitors from, and this was just the example that we we're using, but from like uh, Iron Man and Iron Man Two, when he's down in his lab and. So like, um, what was the other movie? The John, the um, Tom Cruise movie. Minority uh, with the Report. Rating. Minority Report. Yeah. Is this what we're talking about? Like this goof here? Yeah. Something like that? Anyways, Chachi. Yeah. Yeah. Chachi says dot net. Chachi yeah. says the vidcast. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Everything else. What, can you give us a preview of what's coming up on Chachi says the vidcast? Nope. Please. No. Please tell the people what you're going to do. I can't. Are you changing it? No. Then tell the people. No. It's Thanksgiving week, man. It doesn't matter. Okay. No. Well, well there's your hint. Chachi's just not going to help. Me, I'm at Sorgatron.com. No, you're not. I am. No. And I posted a blog today. You're fired. I posted a blog today. There's the door. I, it's over there. Get out. I'm going to go yell at people and get angry. <laughs> get angry at Chachi! All right. Um, But uh, yeah, I've been posting videos and stuff there too about my thoughts and stuff. So it's amazing wanting to do that when you have a front facing camera. Um, so yeah, go check that out and check out everything we're doing here at awesomecast.com. Uh, and, uh, hey, hit us up on email at contact at awesomecast.com to uh, 724258cast is the, uh, is the phone number if you want to send in a voicemail. And of course we are at awesomecast on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're also on the Google Plus where we had a big long conversation about, uh, some of the topics on last week's show. If you want to continue conversation, all those are great places for you to do them. Just, uh, text us, tag us however you want. For this is episode Awesome Cast 78. Uh, for everybody, you have been a great chat room, an awesome chat room, even. And you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Who wants to unlock my iPhone? The guy is awesome. Yeah. So now I guess I have to call and make it. Whoa! Episode. What? Did you just see that? What I, I saw, saw that. that. What, what was that? What did I do? Uh, that's my... Uh, uh, did, well, I have a video uh, switcher uh, from the 90s. Oh, that's... Uh, oh, God. That, that, that's what I've been using for the video to do, use more cameras. Uh, it's actually oh, the same switcher. I know. <laughs> This. Let's see if this works. Well, I stopped so. it. I just, hey, you can stop this. Made a uh, look at all these wipes so. and things she hey. got. That's very uh, very fancy. Yeah, is there a star wipe? We need a star wipe. <laughs> We're like the uh, news. All I see is zoom PNP. Uh, flip. Oh wait, if I do this.
And then I go like this. We're picture in picture. There you uh, go. There you go. Now listen, wow. Josh. Hey, you know what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, it's like the Brady Bunch. You're down there. <laughs> I'm going to point down there. You with a face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> star wipe. Everybody's up for star wipe. I don't know. It might be in here. There's. I remember there's a whole bunch of things. I can chroma key with this thing. It's not going to be any good, but <laughs> I doubt it. But uh, yeah, we, we actually worked with the chroma key. That, that deer story we did. All right. <clears throat> that deer story? Oh, yeah, the deer With the bear, the talking bear, what I...